Chapter 11, Admission, Discharge, Transfer, and Referrals. Learning Objectives. List four major steps involved in the admission process. Identify four common psychosocial responses when clients are admitted to a health agency. Give three examples of the use of transfers in client care. Explain the difference between transferring clients and referring clients. Describe three levels of care that nursing homes provide. Discuss the purpose of a minimum data set, an MDS. Identify two contributing factors to the increased demand for home health care. Admissions involve physician authorization, billing information, completion of the agency's admission data, documentation of the client's medical history and findings from physical examination, development of an initial nursing care plan, and initial medical orders for treatment. Is the following statement true or false? The first step of admission is the collection of billing information by the admitting department of the healthcare agency. This is incorrect. The first step of admission is the authorization from a physician that the person requires specialized care and treatment. Medical authorization. Before admission, a physician determines whether a client's condition requires special tests, technical care, or treatment. Some clients are scheduled for non-urgent care, such as some types of surgery on a mutually agreeable date and time. Most clients, however, see a primary care or emergency department physician just before admission. The physician advises both the client and the nursing staff to proceed with the admission process. The admitting department. In the admitting department of a hospital, clerical personnel begin to gather information from the prospective client and his or her family. They initiate the medical record with data obtained at this time. They prepare a form with the client's address, place of employment, if the client works, insurance carrier and policy numbers, Medicare information and other personal data. The hospital's business office uses this information for record keeping and billing. Clients who are extremely unstable or in severe discomfort may bypass the admitting department and go directly to the nursing unit. Personnel eventually will direct someone from the family to the admitting department on the client's behalf or go to the client's bedside to obtain the needed information. Generally, the admissions clerk prepares an identification bracelet for the client, which contains the client's name, an identification number, and in some cases a barcode for computerized scanning purposes. Someone in the admitting department or the admitting nurse applies the bracelet. For the client's safety, he or she must wear the bracelet throughout the stay. Along with asking a client's name and date of birth, the bracelet is the single most important method for identifying the client. If the identification bracelet is missing or has been removed, the nurse is responsible for replacing it as soon as possible. Once personnel have collected preliminary data, they notify the nursing unit and escort the client to the site where he or she will receive care. They deliver the form initiated in the admitting department to the nursing unit. Sometimes a plastic card called an address -a graph plate that contains client information accompanies the admission paperwork. Nurses use the address -a graph plate to stamp laboratory test request forms, forms that accompany a laboratory specimen, and charge slips for special items such as dressing supplies used in the client's care. Nursing Admission Activities Preparing the client's room. When the admissions department informs the nursing unit that the client is about to arrive, the nurses check the room to ensure it is clean and stocked with basic equipment for initial care, which is a wash basin, a soap dish, an emesis basin, a water pitcher, a bedpan, and a urinal. They later provide personal care items such as soap, skin lotion, a toothbrush, toothpaste, razors, paper tissues, and denture containers for clients who need them. They also have have oxygen administration equipment on hand, a uh, IV stand for supporting IV fluids, and anything else required at the time of initial treatment. Welcoming the client. One of the most important steps in admission is to make the client feel welcome. On arrival, the admitting nurse greets the client warmly with a smile and a handshake. He or she wears a name tag, introduces himself or herself, and also introduces other personnel in the area. Being treated courteous courteously helps the client relax. A client who feels unexpected or unwanted is likely to have a poor and lasting negative first impression of the unit. Orienting the client. Orientation is helping a person become familiar with a new environment. 
It, this facil facilitates comfort and adaptation. When orienting a client, the nurse describes the following, the location of the nurse's station, toilet, shower, or bathing area, and lounge available to the clients and visitors, where to store clothing and personal items, how to call for nursing assistance from the bed and bathroom, how to adjust the hospital bed, how to regulate the room lights, how to use the telephone, and any policy about diverting incoming calls to the nurse's station during the night, how to operate the television, the daily routine such as meal times, or how to order them directly from the food service department, when the doctor usually visits, when surgery is scheduled, when laboratory or diagnostic tests are, are to be performed. Some hospitals provide booklets with information about the agency, such as gift shop hours, newspaper deliveries, and the location of the chapel or name of the chaplain. Such booklets, however, should never replace a nurse's individualized explanation. Safeguarding the valuables and clothing. Nurses give certain items such as prescription and non-prescription medications, valuable jewelry, and large sums of money to family members to take home. If this is not possible, the nurse must carefully observe the agency's policies. Some institutions provide clients who are not expected to stay longer than 24 hours with a locker to store personal effects. The nurse may be able to place the client's valuables in the hospital safe temporarily. He or she notes in the medical record the type of valuables and how they have been safeguarded. It is best to be as descriptive as possible. For example, rather than indicating that the nurse placed a ring in the safe, it is better to describe the type of metal and stone in the ring. Losing a client's personal items can have serious legal implications for both the nurse and the health care agency. The client may sue, claiming the belongings were lost or stolen because of careless handling. Therefore, it is best to have a second nurse's, a supervisor's, or a security person's signature on the envelope containing the secured valuables. One method for avoiding discrepancies between the items entrusted to the nurse and those eventually returned is to make an inventory, which both the nurse and the client sign. The nurse gives one copy to the client and attaches another to the chart. When adding items or returning them to the client, the nurse revises the list and the client signs the new inventory. Problems with theft or loss may occur without subsequent documentation. The nurse identifies client-owned equipment, such as a walker or wheelchair, with a large, easily read label. Labeling prevents confusing personnel, personal equipment with that belonging to the facility. Most agencies have places in the client's room for storing street clothing. Because clients occasionally remove eyeglasses and dentures from time to time, such items may be lost or broken. Generally, the healthcare agency is responsible for replacing these items if negligence of the staff causes accidental damage or loss. Helping the client undress. To facilitate a physical exam, the client must undress. If the client cannot undress without the nurse's help, the nurse does the following. Provides privacy, has the client sit on the edge of the bed, which has already been lowered, removes the client's shoes, gathers each stocking, sliding it down the leg and over the foot, helps the client lie down if weak or tired, releases fasteners such as zippers and buttons, and removes the item of clothing in whatever way is most comfortable and least disturbing. For example, the nurse folds or gathers a garment and works it up and over the body. He or she has the client lift the hips to slide clothes up or down lifts the client's head to, to guide garments over it, rolls the client from side to side to remove clothes that fasten up the front or back, covers the client with a bath blanket after removing the outer clothing, or puts a hospital gown on the client, explaining that hospital gowns fasten in the back. Compiling the nurse's database. On admission, the nurse begins assessing the client and collecting information for the database. Although the registered nurse is responsible for the admission of the patient, he or she may delegate some aspects to the practical nurse, nursing student, or other ancillary staff. Physical assessment skills, which include taking vital signs, are discussed in more depth in chapters 12 and 13. Gerontologic consideration. Detecting clues to elder abuse, neglect, or exploitation is an important nursing responsibility during the admission process for older adults. At least 10% of older adults are victims of elder abuse, which most often occurs is perpetrated by trusted others such as adult children, spouses, and caregivers. Reports to adult protective service organizations must be made when elder abuse is suspected and even if it is not confirmed. Reconciling medications. Medication reconciliation refers to obtaining and verifying the medic medications a client is currently taking, the name, dosage, 
frequency of administration, and route are necessary to obtain. The information is collected on admission and readmission to a hospital, and before any transition in care, such as to a long-term care facility, home health services, or agency for rehab. Any discrepancies are communicated to the client's physician. Pharmacologic consideration. 40% of medication errors are attributed to inadequate medication reconciliation practices. Skills 11.1 describes the basic steps in admitting a client. Additions or modifications to the procedure depend largely on the client's condition and, and agency's policies. Initial nursing plan of care. Once all admissions data are collected, the nurse develops an initial plan for the client's care as soon as possible, but no later than 24 hours following admission. The initial plan generally identifies priority problems and includes the client's projected needs for teaching and discharge planning. The nurse revises the care plan as more data accumulate or if the client's condition changes. Medical admission responsibilities. The nurse notifies the physician once the admission procedure is completed. The physician provides medical orders for medications and other treatments, laboratory and diagnostic tests, activity and diet. He or she also obtains a medical history and performs a physical exam within 24 hours of admission. The physician may delegate this task to another member of the medical team, such as the medical student, an intern, or resident. The medical history and physical exam generally include identifying data, reason for seeking care, history of present illness, personal history, past health history, family history, review of body systems, and conclusions. If the physician is unsure of the actual medical diagnosis, he or she uses the term rule out or the abbreviation R slash O to indicate that the condition is suspected, but additional diagnostic data must be obtained before confirmation. Medical history and physical examination and review. The nurse notifies the physician once the admission procedure is completed. The physician provides medical orders for medications and other treatments, such as laboratory and diagnostic tests, activity, and diet. He or she also obtains a medical history and performs a physical examination within 24 hours of admission. The physician may delegate this task to another member of the medical team, such as a medical student, an intern, or a resident. The medical history and physical examination generally include identifying data, reasons for seeking care, history of present illness, personal history, past health history, family history, review of body systems, and conclusions. If the physician is unsure of the actual medical diagnosis, he or she uses the term rule out or the abbreviation R slash O to indicate that the condition is suspected, but additional diagnostic tests must be obtained before confirmation. Common responses to admission. Nurses and physicians must remember that no matter how often they have admitted clients, it is a unique and possibly emotionally traumatic experience for the client. Leaving the security of the home and entering an unfamiliar environment compounds the stress of physical illness and contributes to emotional and social distress. Although specific responses to admission are unique, common reactions include anxiety, loneliness, decreased privacy, and loss of identity. In addition, the nurse may identify one or more of the following nursing diagnoses as a consequence of admission. Anxiety, fear, decisional conflict, situational low self-esteem, powerlessness, social isolation, and ineffective self-health management. Anxiety is an uncomfortable feeling caused by insecurity. The NANDA International has defined it as a vague, uneasy feeling of discomfort or dread accompanied by an autonomic response. The source is often nonspecific or unknown to the individual. A feeling of apprehension caused by anticipation of danger and enables the individual to take measures to deal with threat. Many adults do not manifest their anxiety in obvious ways. Observant nurses may note that adults appear sad or worried, are restless, have a reduced appetite, and have trouble sleeping. Because adults have a greater capacity to process information than children, it is helpful to acknowledge their uneasiness and to provide explanations 
and instructions before any new experience. Nursing Care Plan 11-1 provides an example of how to use the nursing process when planning the care of a client with anxiety. This is on page 173 in Fundamentals. Loneliness occurs when a client cannot interact with family and friends. Although nurses can never replace significant others, they act as temporary surrogates and should make frequent contact with the client. To help combat loneliness, many hospitals and nursing homes have adopted liberal visiting hours. They are also lifting age restrictions to allow more contact between children and their sick relatives. Decrease privacy. Privacy is at a premium in most health care agencies. Providing private rooms for all hospitalized clients is becoming a trend because of Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, the HIPAA legislation. Although most prefer a private room, not all clients, especially those in nursing homes, have one. In fact, clients may have little more than a few feet that they can consider their personal space. For most, it is stressful to share a room with a stranger. To ensure privacy, the nurses close room doors unless safety issues require observation. Doors may be open at the client's request, but this results in being observed by many people who pass by at all hours. Nurses demonstrate respect for and protect each client's right to privacy. They always shield clients from the view of others when giving personal care. If a client's door is closed or the curtains are pulled, the nurse knocks and asks permission to enter. If the healthcare agency has a place where clients can find solitude, such as a chapel or reading room, the nurse includes this information in the admission orientation. Loss of identity. Admission to the healthcare facility may temporarily deprive a person of his or her identity. For example, clients wearing hospital gowns tend to look somewhat alike. As a result, personnel may treat clients impersonally, simply as a face or a warm body with no name. This attitude makes clients feel like they are receiving care, but without caring. Nurses learn and use the client's first name and surname. They use first names only at the client's request. They encourage clients to display pictures or other small personal objects that reaffirm their unique life and personality. Many long-term care facilities urge clients to dress in their own clothing and invite them to furnish their rooms with personal items from home. The discharge process. Regardless of where or why clients are admitted, the goal is to keep the admission brief and to discharge clients to the home or to another healthcare facility of their choice as soon as possible. Discharge, the termination of care from a healthcare agency, generally consists of discharge planning, obtaining a written medical order, completing discharge instructions, notifying the business office, helping the client leave the agency, writing a summary of the client's condition at discharge, and requesting that the room be cleaned. Discharge planning. Discharge planning is a process that Im improves client outcomes by one, predetermining his or her post-discharge needs in a timely manner, and two, coordinating the use of appropriate community resources to provide a continuum of care. If effective, discharge planning shortens the hospital stay, decreases the cost of in-hospital care, reduces the necessity for readmission, and eases the transition between the hospital and the next level of care. Activities involved in discharge planning, which are incorporated within the plan of care, ideally begin at admission or shortly thereafter. Although the discharge planner may be a nurse consultant or a social worker, the planning often involves a multidisciplinary team of personnel from a skilled intermediate or basic care nursing facility, home health agency and hospice provider, a physical, occupational or speech therapist, a medical equipment supplier and others. There are monetary penalties if clients with Medicare are readmitted to a hospital within 30 days of discharge. Gerontologic considerations. Early discharge planning and the appropriate use of community resources may enable older adults to return to their own homes. Discharge planning for older adults should begin as soon as feasible and consider the needs of caregivers, which may include family, friends, or paid helpers. Delaying discharge planning or teaching until immediately before the discharge may not meet the educational needs of older clients and family members, which can result in readmissions. Resources available to discharged older adults include senior centers, adult daycare centers, faith-based organizations, churches, and care management services. In addition, support and education may come from advocacy groups such as the Alzheimer's Association, Area Councils on Aging, Parkinson's Support Groups, and the American Cancer Society. 
Barriers to the use of community-based services by older adults include the following. Lack of financial assets to pay for services. Reluctance to spend assets for services. Unwillingness to acknowledge or accept the need for services. Mistrust of service providers. Cultural differences. Lack of time, energy, or problem-solving ability to identify and select appropriate services. Discharge planning usually is simple and routine. Clients with one or more of the following characteristics may have special considerations related to discharge planning. Age older than 75 years, multiple chronic or terminal health problems, cognitive impairment, motivational problems or confusion, inability to perform self-care, impaired mobility, safety risks associated with independent living or that pose a burden to potential caregivers, a treatment regimen involving multiple medications, dietary management or complicated medical equipment, history of multiple treatments in the emergency department, obtaining authorization for medical discharge. The physician determines when the client is well enough for discharge. Generally, he or she waits to write the medical order until after examining the client. Before leaving the nursing unit, the physician writes the discharge order, provides written prescriptions for the client, and indicates when and where a follow-up appointment should occur. Leaving against medical advice, AMA, is a term that applies to situations in which the client leaves before the physician authorizes the discharge. Many times it happens because the client is unhappy with an aspect of care. In some cases, the nurse may negotiate a compromise or persuade the client to delay such action. In the meantime, the nurse informs the physician and nursing supervisor of the client's wish to leave. If the client is determined to leave, the nurse asks him or her to sign a special form. This signed form may release the physician and agency from future responsibility for any complications, but it is not a guarantee. If the client refuses to sign, personnel cannot prevent him or her from leaving. They note in the client's medical record, however, that they presented the form and that the client subsequently refused it. It is a myth that the client's insurance provider will refuse to pay for the client's care following a discharge AMA. Providing discharge instructions. When the nurse anticipates that a client will be discharged home, he or she establishes the anticipated knowledge, skills, and community resources that the client will need to maintain a set safe level of care. One method, one discharge planning technique uses the acronym METHOD, Table 11-2. The nurse provides the teaching identified in the discharge plan periodically during the client's stay and documents it in the record. The METHOD Discharge Planning Guide, M, Medications. Instruct the client about drugs that will be self-administered, for example, insulin. E, Environment. Explore how the home environment can be modified to ensure the client's safety. Example, remove scatter rugs. T. Treatments. Demonstrate how to perform skills involved in self-care and provide opportunities for returning the demonstration, such as dressing changes. H. Health teaching. Identify information that is necessary for maintaining or improving health. Example. Signs and symptoms of complications. O. O is outpatient referral. Explain what community services are available that may ease the client's transition to independent living such as physical therapy, and D, diet, arrange for the dietitian to provide verbal and written instructions on modifying or restricting certain foods or suggestions for altering their methods of preparation. An example would be a low-fat diet. Before the client leaves, the nurse reviews the teaching that has been provided, gives the client's prescriptions to have filled, and advises the clients to make an office appointment for the date specified by the physician. He or she provides a written summary of discharge instructions. The client signs and keeps the original. The nurse attaches a copy to the client's medical record. Notifying the business office. Before the client leaves the agency, the nurse notifies the business office. At that time, clerical personnel verify that all insurance information is complete and that the client has signed a consent form authorizing the release of medical information to the insurance carrier. If records are incomplete or the client has no health insurance, the client may be asked to make arrangements for future financial payments before discharge. Discharging the client. When all the preliminary business is complete, the nurse helps the client gather his or her belongings, plans for transportation, and actually leave the agency. Gathering belongings. If necessary, the nurse helps the client repack personal items, 
The nurse uses the inventory of valuables to ensure that nothing has been lost or forgotten. Because most hospitals dispose of the plastic supplies like the basin, bedpan, and urinal, the nurse can offer them to the client. Otherwise, he or she discards them in the soiled utility room. A wheeled cart is helpful to transport the client's belongings. Arranging transportation. The nurse informs clients about the agency's checkout time, the time before which they can avoid being charged for another full day. In most cases, the client contacts a family member or friend for assistance with transportation. If no transportation is available, the client may use public transportation, a taxi cab, or an ambulance to get home. Van transportation may be available for older adults through the local commission on aging, but 24 advance hour advance notification is usually required. Escorting the client. When the client is ready, the nurse takes him or her to the door in a wheelchair and allows the client to walk there, preferably with assistance. The client may choose to have discharge prescriptions filled at the hospital's pharmacy before leaving. Generally, the nurse remains with the client until he or she is safely inside a vehicle or waiting in the lobby for a ride. Writing a discharge summary. After the client has left the healthcare agency, the nurse documents the discharge activities and client's condition. See skill 11-2. Terminal cleaning. Except in unusual circumstances, housekeeping personnel prepare the client's room for the next admission. They strip the bed of linen and clean it with disinfectant, and they restock the bedside cabinet with basic equipment. They then notify the admitting department that the unit is ready. These measures prevent assigning a client to a room that still requires cleaning. The transfer process. A transfer, discharging a client from one unit or agency and admitting him or her to another without going home in the interim may occur when a client's condition improves or worsens. Generally, a transfer has some advantage for the client. It may facilitate more specialized care in a life-threatening situation, or it may reduce health care costs. Many hospitals are creating step-down units, progressive care units, or transitional care units. These units are for clients who were once in a critical or unstable condition, but have recovered sufficiently to require less intensive nursing care. Transfer activities. Transferring a client to a, nurse, to a different nursing unit is less complex than to another agency. In a transfer within the same agency, the nurse does the following. Informs the client and family about the transfer. Completes a transfer summary, a written review of the client's current, stat current status, briefly describing the client's current condition and reason for transfer. Speaks with the nurse on the transfer unit to coordinate the transfer. The change of shift report in Chapter 9 can be used as a model. Transports the client and his or her belongings, medications, nursing supplies, and chart to the other unit. When transferring the client to a nursing home or other facility, the nurse conducts the process similarly to a discharge. The client is discharged from the hospital and admitted to the transfer facility. Gerontological considerations. Nurses should allow additional time when admitting, discharging, or transferring older adults who have functional or cognitive impairments so they and their caregivers can process the information. Nurses should allow time because of possible functional impairments. Steps involved in transfer. Informing the client and family about the transfer. Completing a transfer summary. Speaking with the nurse on the transfer unit to coordinate the transfer, transporting the client and his or her belongings, medications, nursing supplies, and charts to the other unit. Is the following true or false? Transfer involves discharging the client from one unit or agency and allowing him to go home. The answer is false. Transfer involves discharging a client from one unit or agency and, and admitting him or her to another without going home in the interim. Extended care facilities. Older adults in particular may be transferred directly from an acute care hospital to a facility that provides extended care. An extended care facility is a health care agency that provides long-term care. It's designed for people who do not meet the criteria for hospitalization. Although group homes for assisted living, adult daycare centers, senior residential communities, home health care agencies, and hospice organizations all fit this, 
this description, extended care is generally associated with nursing homes. Gerontologic considerations. About 93% of the older adult populations lives in independent housing settings in the community, with the remaining 7% equally divided between nursing facilities and settings that provide some assistance with daily needs. The range of housing options for older adults is increasing. Nursing homes are classified as skilled nursing facilities or those that provide intermediate or basic care. Skilled nursing facilities. A nursing home licensed as a skilled nursing facility provides 24-hour nursing care under the direction of an RN. The facility is reimbursed for the care of clients who require specific technical nursing skills. To qualify for skilled care, the client must be referred by a physician and must require daily skilled nursing care. The following are examples of co common procedures that qualify. Care for a pressure ulcer, enteral feedings or intravenous feedings or fluids, bowel or bladder, bladder retraining, injectable medications, sterile dressing changes, tracheotomy care, Skilled care is provided from a multidisciplinary perspective. In addition to a 24-hour team of nurses, a skilled nursing facility must provide rehabilitation services such as physical therapy and occupational therapy, pharmaceutical services, dietary services, diversional and therapeutic activities, and routine and emergency dental services. Many of the latter services are provided by qualified people on a contractual basis rather than through full-time employment. To qualify for Medicare benefits in a nursing home, a, a person must have been hospitalized for three or more days within 30 days before needing skilled nursing care. Clients who meet the criteria are eligible for 100 days of assistance with the costs. There is no charge for the first 20 days. For the next 80 days, Medicare pays all but $157.50 per day. Some older adults have private insurances known as Medigap policies that assist with charges from day 21 through, through 100. If not, or if clients continue to require skilled get care behind beyond 100 days, they must bear the cost personally until they are considered indigent. After clients have exhausted their own financial resources and those of their spouse, they may apply to the state for Medicaid or its equivalent. Intermediate care facilities. A nursing home may also be licensed as an intermediate care facility. This type of agency provides health-related care and services to people who, because of their mental or physical condition, require institutional care, but not 24-hour nursing care. Clients who require intermediate care may need supervision because they tend to wander or are confused. They need assistance with oral medications, bathing, dressing, toileting, and mobility. Medicare does not provide reimbursement for intermediate care. Clients assume the cost. For impoverished residents, state welfare programs such as Medicaid will pay. Some nursing homes do not accept Medicaid clients, however, because states fix the fees for reimbursement at much lower amounts than Medicare and private insurance provide. Basic care facilities. A third type of nursing home is a basic care facility, an agency that provides extended custodial care. The emphasis is on providing shelter, food, and laundry services in a group setting. These clients assume much responsibility for their own activities of daily living, such as hygiene and dressing, preparing for sleep, and joining others for meals. Intermediate and basic care may be provided at a skilled nursing facility, but usually in separate wings. Determining the level of care. Determining the level of care. The level of care is determined at or prior to admission. Each client is assessed using a standard form developed by the Healthcare Financing Association called a Minimum Data Set, MDS, for nursing home resident assessment and care screening. By federal law, the MDS is repeated every three months or whenever a client's condition changes. The MDS requires an assessment of the following. Cognitive patterns, communication and hearing patterns, vision patterns, physical functioning and structural problems, continence patterns in the last 14 days, and psychosocial well-being mood and behavior patterns, activity pursuit patterns, disease diagnoses, health conditions, oral and nutritional status, oral and dental status, skin condition, medication use, special treatments and procedures. Problems identified on the MDS are then reflected in the nursing care plan. 
selecting a nursing home. When the need arises, family members are often ill-prepared for selecting a nursing home. A discharge planner can assist with arranging nursing home care. Brochures on, on selection are available from the American Association of Retired Persons, the Commission on Aging, and each state's public health and welfare departments. Websites also provide valuable information. What is the appropriate action for the nurse to take with a client's valuables? A. Hand them over to the supervisor. B. Ask the client to keep them with himself or herself. C. Hand them over to the admitting department. Or D. Place them in the hospital safe temporarily. The answer is D. Place them in the hospital safe temporarily. The nurse should place the client's valuables in the hospital safe temporarily. Losing a client's personal items can have serious legal implications for both the nurse and health care agency. Therefore, the nurse should not hand them over to the supervisor, ask the client to keep them himself, or hand them over to the admitting department. The referral process. A referral is the process of sending someone to another person or agency for special services. Referrals generally are made to private practitioners or community agencies. Table 11-4 on page 181 lists some common community services to which people with declining health, physical disabilities, or special needs are referred, such as Commission on Aging, Hospice, Visiting Nurses Association, Meals on Wheels, Homemaker Services, Home Health Aids, Adult Protective Services, Respite Care, Older Americans Ombudsman. Considering Referrals. Considering referrals is part of a good discharge planning. For example, a nurse, a case manager, or an agency discharge planner may help refer clients for home health care. Because planning, coordinating, and communicating take time, personnel initiate referrals as soon as possible once a need is identified. Uninter uninterrupted client care despite a change in caregivers, thus avoiding any loss of progress that has been made. Selecting a nursing home. The nurse teaches the client or family to do the following. Find out the levels of care, skilled, intermediate, or basic that the nursing home is licensed to provide. Review inspection reports on each home. The information is available from the state's public health department on a fee-per-page basis. Ask others in the community, including the family physician, for recommendations. Visit nursing homes with and again without an appointment. Go at least once during a meal. Note the appearance of residents and how staff members respond to their needs. Observe the cleanliness of the surroundings and any unpleasant odors. Request brochures that identify medical care, nursing services, rehabilitation therapy, social services, activity programs, religious observances, and residents' rights and privileges. Clarify charges and billing procedures. Analyze if the overall impression of the home is positive or negative. Is the following statement true or false? Skilled nursing facility provides 24-hour nursing care under the direction of a registered nurse. The answer is true. Skilled nursing facilities provide 24-hour nursing care under the direction of a registered nurse. Home health care. Home health care is health care provided in the home by an employee of a home health agency. Public agencies, regional, state, or federal, such as the public health department, or private agencies may provide home health care. The number of clients who receive home health care continues to rise, partly as an outcome of limitations imposed by Medicare and insurance companies on the number of hospital and nursing home days for which they reimburse care. Another factor is the growing number of chronically ill older adults in the population in need of assistance. According to the U.S. Census Bureau of 2014, 38.7% of people aged 65 and over reported having one or more disabilities such as hearing, vision, cognition, and ambulation, self-care, or independent living. Those aged 85 and older accounted for 25.4% of the total. Types of assistance older adults may need include basic activities of daily living, bathing, dressing, eating, and getting around the house, preparing meals, shopping, housework, managing money, using the phone, and taking medications.
in review, factors contributing to the increased demand for home health care, outcome of limitations imposed by Medicare and insurance companies on the number of hospital and nursing home days for which they reimburse, and growing number of chronically ill older adults in need of assistance. Is the following statement true or false? Home care nursing services help shorten the time spent recovering in the hospital. This is true. Home care nursing services help shorten the time spent recovering in the hospital. They prevent admissions to extended care facilities and reduce readmissions to acute care facilities. General gerontologic considerations. Older adults may minimize their symptoms, consider methods to facilitate or minimize alterations, planning a transfer to an institutional setting, Allow additional time when admitting, discharging, or transferring older adults. And pets are an integral social support system. Gerontologic considerations. Medicare requires that a client meet all the following five eligibility criteria for coverage of home care services. One, the service must be ordered by a primary care provider. Two, the person must be homebound. Homebound status is met if leaving the home requires a considerable and taxing effort, such as needing personal assistance, or the help of a wheelchair or specialized van. Allowable activities include attendance at an adult daycare center or religious service. Three, the person needs skilled nursing care or rehabilitative services. Four, the person requires intermittent but not full-time care. Five, the care must be provided by or under arrangements with a Medicare certified provider. Some older adults have difficulty accepting help from others or they may not recognize the need. It is important to identify methods to facilitate necessary changes and minimize any alterations when planning care for older adults. General gerontologic considerations. The services must be ordered by a primary care provider. This is review of home health um, requirements. The person must be homebound. The person needs skilled nursing care or rehab services. The person requires intermittent but not full-time care. The care must be provided by or under arrangements with a Medicare certified provider. General gerontologic considerations, barriers to use of community-based services, lack of finances or reluctance to spend money for service payments, unwillingness to admit need, mistrust of service providers, and lack of time, energy, or ability to find appropriate services. Responsibility of the home health care nurses, box 11.3 on page 183. Assess the readiness of the client and the home environment. Treat each client with respect regardless of the person's standard of living. Identify health or social problems that require nursing, allied health, or supportive care services. Plan, coordinate, and monitor home care. Give skilled care to clients requiring part-time nursing services. Teach and supervise the client in self-care activities and family members who participate in the client's home care. Assess the safety of health practices that are being used. Observe, evaluate, and modify environmental and social factors that affect the client's progress. Evaluate the urgency and complexity of each client's changing health needs. Keep accurate written records and submit documentation to the agency for the purpose of reimbursement. Arrange for referrals to other health care agencies. Discharge clients who have reached a level of self-reliance. This is the end of the slideshow.